So I'm gonna show you guys exactly how to make a graphic like this for your clothing brand, but there is a catch. The reason why designing like this is so easy is because I use assets and these assets I make myself, but you can get assets from everywhere. The asset I'm gonna be using is the bystanders pack, which you guys can get right now. And the asset that I'm gonna be using for my website is Oasis Stars, but that's not it. In this video, we'll be going over complex effects like displacement maps and also using blending options and fill tools to make a final design and the most effective way possible. So let's go ahead and get locked in. So this design is going to start with the bystander pack. I know, I know it's only available on the Studio Wheel Patreon, but that's for a good reason. I actually came up with a Photoshop action that can do this like automatically. And I'm gonna make a video about it later. I think once this whole series is over, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I use this pack to make easy and quick graphics for your clothing brand. Next, I wanted to introduce this butterfly and basically I'm going to be using the wings and just to save time I'm going I'm going to be using the magic one tool and uh, subject selection to cut out our image obviously when you press Q you can view it in this mode where you can make adjustments and edit the selection so white is add black is take away once you're happy just make a mask and convert that into a smart object and then we're gonna go into the blending options and we're gonna add our pattern. Now you could either use a half tone pattern or anything that has a lot of lines because we're trying to make this almost into a digital look. And that's why I'm using this sort of grid pattern and making patterns in um, Photoshop is fairly easy. You just need to take a screenshot of your image and define it as a pattern. Now back to our design, I'm gonna go ahead and change the opacity of the pattern a little bit so we still have detail from our actual graphic. And then I'm gonna add a threshold on top and just play with it until I'm kind of satisfied with the look that I want. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add a stroke. And those are the settings for the stroke. And I'm gonna add another one on the outside. And those are the settings for the outside stroke. Basically make a double stroke to match the actual graphic that we have from the bystanders pack. Now, all we have to do now is add a displacement map. So convert this into a smart object once you're happy and then go over to filter and then go to displace and then press displacement map and then put the settings in 1010. And then you just have a PSD. Save this as a, a Photoshop map and you can use that to displace your image how you see fit. Again, you want to turn that into a smart object because if you move around your image while it has a displacement map on there, because it's following a PSD file, if you move that file, the displacement map is going to move as well. So next, I'm just going to go ahead and put the wings of the butterfly underneath our graphic that we have and just align it. So basically, he looks like he's falling or he looks like he's flying like an angel. Next, we're going to head into the blending options of the guy. And in the blending options, we're going to copy the same settings that we did for the butterfly so stroke and then another stroke because we want it to look cohesive next we're going to go ahead and add some text and i'm going to be using the fonts called impact i think it's installed on every computer every mac that i know of so i'm going to be just putting ground and then we're going to copy the exact same settings we did for the stroke in terms of blending options for the guy and the butterfly. Before we continue, I'll show you quickly how to make a Photoshop map. So the first thing you wanna do is open a new file in Photoshop and you wanna size it at a reasonably large size because you're gonna be using this in a lot of graphics. So 3000 by 3000 is perfectly fine. And let's create that one. And then let's find a texture. So once you have your texture, find something that's kind of crazy because it influences how your graphic looks, obviously. Download it at a large size. Texture Labs is perfect for that. And once you get your download, save that, put that into the actual file. So I'm gonna press okay. And now I'm just gonna save this. Save it in a location where you know you have Photoshop maps. Once you're in that location, just put save new or whatever you wanna name it as. Let's grab um, this side graphic right here. Put it into Photoshop. And then if we go to filter, distort, displace, and then you put in these settings and then you find the new Photoshop map you saved and you press OK, you have a displaced image, displaced graphic. And that's how easy it is to make these sort of grunge graphics. So we're going to go ahead and apply a displacement map on the text as well. And I'm going to put the horizontal into like a 15 because I want it to be a little bit more destroyed um, horizontally. I'm going to use this map, 
bam, our graphic looks nice, cool, and grunge, and it matches our guy falling. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new typeface, Emiliana script, and I'm gonna follow the same exact settings we did for the wings and the guy, so stroke one, stroke two, and that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to add a displacement map on this. I want this to be clean and readable. So I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate the vintage and I'm just going to retype this text because I haven't converted it into a smart object. I'm going to put falling in love because, you know, it matches the whole aesthetic and the graphic is looking fine right now. But I want to add a little bit of details and instead of stars, I'm going to put love hearts and I have the perfect pack for this, which is the Oasis stars. And I'm going to be using this asset here and just placing it around the graphic because we're in Photoshop and we're using artboards. We can go ahead and just make a new artboard. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and copy the falling in love. And then I'm gonna go ahead and group the ground and vintage and put that on top to make a sort of, you know, pants design or even side slash sleeve graphic. Go ahead and add a new layer on top and go to select color range and then go into shadows and make your range all the way black. And on that new layer you've made, just fill that layer in with black with the selection and you have your design complete. Repeat that for the sleeves and now your design is basically finished. So I have this mock-up that I created um, a while ago actually and I use it as a realistic mock-up for like hoodies and stuff like that when clients ask me to and I'm just going ahead and putting it on there and using a mask to cut out where the zipper is and sizing it. And yeah, that's basically it to make this graphic. Now, realistic mockups come in hand, especially when you want to put them on a website or stuff like that. Some clients ask for this. Uh, most of them don't. Um, but yeah, it's something that I do offer if the design is realistic. Obviously, if it's a cut and sew piece and you want to make a realistic mockup, you can do that. It just takes a while. And to change the color of your actual mockups, you're going to use gradient maps. So when you're using gradient maps you can go in and change the different hues of the different areas so to the left it's the shadows so if i make the shadows white the garment is going to be white and if i change the highlights that's going to also affect the garment and that's a very quick rundown on how to make realistic mock-ups again if you guys want me to make a full video process on making realistic mock-ups let me know and i'll make a full-on rundown to finish us up, I went ahead and just made a social media display for my daily challenge of posting every single day, making a content video about it. Um, and that was fairly easy. All I had to do was just copy over the pants onto the mock-up with the hoodie. And once I was happy with that, I went ahead and added the back graphic or the graphic to the back and it put it's put well together and it's ready for marketing or even publishing on a website so you can literally get this design and use it as a pre-order so that's also one other reason why people use realistic mock-ups is to push pre-orders especially if you don't have a sample and if you don't have a garment but that is very risky especially if you don't have samples because you won't know how your garment's going to turn out once you go to production but again this is how you make a very quick and easy graphic using assets. And this is how I use my assets for Design by Will. I hope you guys enjoy that. I'll see you guys tomorrow. I love you. Peace.